what does that yep. mean? What is that? <laughs> is, are they all the same? Is, is everyone that you hired the same? What What does it mean to find the right virtual staff? Guess you just have to be very, you know, picky and selective and be careful when hiring your very first virtual staff. <laughs> Welcome back to the Legal Soft Podcast. I'm here with two of our uh, longtime team members, Matt and Phil. Uh, I had the pleasure of actually flying out uh, and actually meeting the, meeting them in person. Uh, it was a great time. Matt and Phil, welcome to the podcast. I wanted to definitely have you guys on. Uh, I think we've been through some of the most challenging uh, client onboardings, client implementations together, and we still use those stories to help future clients and clients we work with. Uh, and I think no one, very few people know as much about onboarding virtual staff law firms as much as you guys do. So uh, thank you guys so much for joining. Yep, sure thing. Awesome. So uh, Phil and Matt, I mean, I want to just kind of jump straight into it. Um, how long have you guys been with the organization for and how many law firms have you guys onboarded with virtual staff? How many virtual staff have you guys seen get onboarded? Phil, we can start uh, with you. My God, I can't even remember. Uh, since I started, I've experienced everything. Uh, <laughs> I've uh, experienced onboarding uh, VAs uh, directly. I've also onboarded a few clients in the past. I've handled some of the big uh, clients that we uh, have here in LegalSoft, and most of them are still here, by the way. Um, yeah. yeah, so uh, I've been with LegalSoft since like 2022, 2021, uh, and we only had like 30 VAs back, back then. <laughs> wow. So it's more than like almost, it's close to like yeah, an insane growth from 30 to like almost you know 1,800 plus now. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Both of you guys together have probably seen more than 3,000 VAs come and, come and go. I mean, I'd say <laughs> maybe maybe a little bit more than that. I <laughs> Just because I your question was about how many law firms you've handled, can't even count that at this point. I've been yeah. here for three years. I mean, it's been, been a heck of a ride, so. Okay, yeah. well, let's jump into that ride. Uh, hopefully, no horror stories. Matt, we'll start with you. What do you think clients um, need to do to be ready to integrate virtual staff into their firms? Or, you know, a firm who's been working at virtual staff for two years, what are they learning in their two years of having virtual staff that they should have known earlier? I mean, first and foremost, I mean, being prepared going into this I mean, is definitely important. I mean, having that mindset that I, I'm not going in here, you know, um, half acidly, if you could say that, I'm making sure that you have, you know, you have your training in place, um, training staff members on site, in office. I, it's a, it's a different approach. Um, you got to be sure that, I mean, you know what you're getting into um, in terms of, yeah, that, that difference in, in culture. I mean, I would say it would be, you know, uh, one important aspect as well. Uh, once you have that down, you know what to expect. Um, that you don't really see these people face to face. You can't really. I, these are people that I, they're there for you, hundred percent. But on screen, uh, once you get around that, things get a lot easier. So I want if you have a team that is, you know, well versed in communicating um, with staff members. I mean, you're you're pretty much all set. I mean, besides from having that training in place. Yeah. And you know, what are like the core things you think they need? So one is, and what if a firm doesn't have a robust, robust training? How would they onboard the virtual staff? How do they get them trained? I mean, by experience, um, cause I mean, this was a fairly new idea when yeah. we got started. So I, I have anecdotal experience and it's pretty much once you start first VA you got, I mean, make sure it's a good one. Um, all your trainings, make sure that they're recorded, have that VA, um, you know, develop that VA, um, as your best one. And then it's a best practice. I mean, making sure that, you know, those training videos, uh, are up there, then continue to refine it as time goes by, um, developing kind of like a handbook, um, of each role that you're opening, each seat that you're opening, um, yeah, getting those processes in place, step-by-step um, -step guide. It's very helpful to staff that, I mean, can't really, you know, interact with you on a face-to-face -face basis. I mean, having something to at least read or watch 
um, to cater for their learning styles is, yeah, is great. And, you know, whenever it comes to the second, and then you know, after the first virtual staff, how does it go with the second virtual staff? How, how easy is the ramp up? After the first one is successful, I mean, it's pretty much, it's just exponentially faster from there. All I can say, once you get one rolling, happy, feeling valued, I mean, that just gets passed on to the next guy um, that comes up. And aboard. they usually can, they usually can train each other, right? Exactly. That, that was one of the things. Um, I mean, if... You know, the first staff member is, you know, that is motivated. Um, yeah, that is passed on. Uh, and it's kind of like a like a disease, really. I mean, that just goes I mean, from one to the other. They can train themselves, bring, you know, um, kind of create an amalgamation of what they are I and mean, what their expertise is were I mean, coming into the firm um, and then creating something brand new that, I mean, even law firms can learn. From. Yeah, I mean, eventually, I think onboarding 10 virtual staff after you already have 10 in is easier than onboarding even that first virtual staff that you have. So yeah. just matter of putting all that work into that first virtual staff and then growing from there. And Phil, Matt touched a lot on finding the right virtual staff initially. What does that yeah. mean? What is that? <laughs> Are they all the same? Is, is everyone that you hired the same? What What does it mean to find the right virtual staff? I guess you just have to be very you know, picky and selective and be careful when hiring your very first uh, virtual staff because from what we've seen, uh, most of the clients who grew big with us uh, started with just one VA and that one VA actually made a lot of difference within the firm um, to make them decide you know, to hire more. Um, we've had several instances where um, the first VA also became you know, uh, like a trainer within the firm, training new um, or incoming virtual staff, even um, internal team members, you know, people that they hired uh, for their, uh, to report directly to the office. Uh, some of them uh, were trained by our VAs, which is crazy. And we also uh, have like clients who have, uh, you, you know, who were just so happy with their experiences that they've, you know, given out incentives. They've even promoted uh, some of the uh, very first hires that they uh, had with us. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we have firms giving like $5,000 annual bonuses nowadays. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I've seen, I mean, yeah. seen more, yeah. I've seen way more than that. I mean, but yeah, it's definitely out there. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of firms also flying out the virtual staff to the office, to conferences, to different places on ground, on hands training. Uh, you know, and I think one of the big reasons why they do that is because, you know, finding someone with experience overseas who's worked, you know, five to 10 years corporate, now doing, a per, now doing you know, working back office pre-litigation law firm, um, the job is, I mean, what's your feedback from the staff? Is the job much easier or much more digestible than some of the past positions that these uh, agents have had? I'd say, you know, uh, it, it kind of depends because each person will have different learning curve. Some are able to adapt faster. Uh, some may take, you know, a little bit more time to get there. It's really important that uh, the training is not rushed or not, you know, uh, don't take uh, or cut corners just to get someone to perform. Um, it also, it's, it's very important as well not to uh, expect like a lot of um things from your virtual assistant when they get started because again, you gotta give them time to learn, right? You gotta give them time to uh, be an, become an expert in the tools, become an expert with their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, tasks. For as long as you let them know what you are expecting from them, long, for as long as you're clear with, um, or they're clear with what their targets are um, and they have visibility over, you know, uh, their, their stats, like how close they are to target or, you know, uh, if they're really doing well, then, you know, it, it highly motivates uh, VAs to do better, of course. Let's talk about, you know, successful firms. And uh, you guys have, you, you both have seen probably, you know, 100 plus firms who are like, wow, they're successful at this. And you've probably seen hundreds of firms who <laughs> they are not going to last. What are you guys seeing as the main differences uh, between those two firms? Starting with successful firms, Matt, if you want to kick us off with, what are successful no firms doing? Successful firms work with us on a very close knit basis. 
Um, they collaborate with us uh, a lot in terms of feedback from the get-go, from the first week to the first month, first quarter, um, and so forth. Um, having that connection with us um, just helps us out, you know, guide them as well. That's what we're here for, of course. Um, and overall communication, I mean, it doesn't end with us. It also, I mean, they should take an active part in it as well. Uh, being, yeah, the people that these staff members interface with on a daily basis, um, as long as there's open communication and um, yeah, I mean, you could see, you know, great success and yeah, I've seen one of the biggest law firms, I mean, that I handle, I mean, has that in place um, and makes intentful decisions to make sure um, that there is a way that the staff members can feel that they belong. If you get that, I mean, your retention rates skyrocket. I mean, you lose close to no VAs. Um, and then you can continue that growth. I mean, because you could grow fast, but you could lose staff as well due to whatever circumstance. Uh, but keeping them happy, keeping them, you know, as part of in the in-house team, because yeah, others unfortunately don't. I mean, they see you as a face on the screen, but nothing more. I mean, the ones that take it a step further and kind of, you know, make sure that they're part integrated well in this team. Um, that's a key for me. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, same thoughts. There are firms who are good uh and relaying you know um or can communicating and um issues with us and for as long as they do that we get to fix it right uh we get to address it immediately um but it doesn't again um with same as what matt said it's not just communication with firm and legal soft uh it's also communicating uh with your vas if ever they have problems right getting feedback from them we try to provide feedback as much as we can. At the same time, um, there are, you know, we, we've seen a few um, firms who don't really communicate much with their VAs, like uh, offload like a bunch of tasks and then not uh, communicate for like the next few days, you know, stuff like that. So having very minimal interaction with your VA usually affect operations because, you know, your VA will have any direction. Sometimes they have to ask other people uh, about how to go, you know, do it, about doing stuff. So it's really best to have that uh, communication, um, you know, channels open all the time. Um, and lastly, not just uh, towards the VA or the uh, legal soft about VA issues, right? Uh, there are also other, you know, business problems that you can, uh, or that they can communicate with legal soft. Um, like for example, um, you know, I've seen some clients who canceled because they don't have any more leads, right? They don't have any more, uh, you know, business is slow, things like that. Um, but if these things are not communicated with us, you know, we can't assist, right? Um, good thing about legal soft is that is that we're we're not only offering VAs, we're also we also have other services that could help address um these things. Um, and all you really have to do is, you know, share those problems with us, you know, listen and, you know, we can um, do some magic on our end. We can schedule you for a few um, meetings and then we can, you know, take it from there. Yeah, I had a firm who was basically just letting go of a bunch of virtual staff because they couldn't get cases. They hated running their firm and they hated a lot of stuff. Uh, we ended up helping them with a lead generation campaign to generate more clients outside of their state instead of just California. Uh, and then they started doubling and tripling their virtual staff and started referring more cases to our other clients who also needed cases. Um, and so we have a huge network of client base that can do that, which is exactly right. So it's communicate with legal soft, communicate with your virtual staff, and a lot of things get solved. Jumping into the next section, you know, working with the attorney or working with assistant operation or working with the operations manager within the firm. Is there a difference? Oh, yeah. Say. I mean, <laughs> He'll go either way. I mean, yeah, both of them are people, you know, by limited experience. I mean, maybe, maybe the head of operations, I mean, whether it be a uh, COO, director of operations, um, or I mean, for smaller firms, the office manager, I mean, it could work. They're on the ground most of the time, which is why they could be easier to talk to for one. And then they have more, you know, they have more 
airtime with the staff, if you could say that. So, I mean, they're easier to deal with. Like for attorneys, it's kind of like, yeah, they have stuff to do. So, I mean, it's hard unless it's a really small firm that hasn't really taken off yet in terms of scale. Yeah, I actually, yeah, now I'm leaning to, you know, someone of office manager operations. Yeah, exactly. It's it's always great to have an office manager because we can, uh, you know, it's easier to collect uh, feedback for the virtual assistants and whenever we have suggestions as well how things can can be improved most of the time it's it's being considered and some changes get implemented afterwards the next thing i want to go into is uh, assistant operation managers for larger accounts aoms we call them and one of the biggest challenges we saw was exactly that some firms didn't have the office manager some firms didn't have the coo and the main attorney was trying to manage 30 or 10 or five virtual staff and manage the firm and so now we launched the assistant operations manager, which for larger accounts, it's a free uh, add-on virtual staff. Basically, the virtual staff is someone that has five to 10 years of experience managing 30 plus people who can take off a lot of the operational headaches um, from the managing attorney. What is What are your thoughts on that, Phil and Matt? How much could that have helped some other firms who aren't with us or whatever it is? And uh, where do you see that going? I could take that, Phil. Yeah, I'll follow up. Yeah, I, I see it as a big help. Uh, especially um, since most of the time for the bigger firms, the main uh, point of contacts that we have are, you know, kind of, they're, they're too busy sometimes managing their, the VAs and managing, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff uh, within the firm. Sometimes uh, there could be a bit of a delay uh, when it comes to responses and stuff. So if you have an account manager, it makes things easier for us to communicate uh, updates um, and on top of that, uh, we have someone who can keep an eye out for the, you know, uh, VA's uh, performance. So whenever they see that, you know, this VA is dipping in terms of numbers, they can always, I mean, they can alert us right away and we can start coaching process and help with VA's improvement. Aside from that, we've seen big law firms and where the main attorneys are participating at actively uh, in the hiring process and the you know selection of candidates when they don't really have to do that because we understand they 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 probably have a lot of uh, better things to do um so they can actually assign all of the you know VA selection uh, moving forward to the account manager or is their HR uh, person or whoever so it's just a matter of delegating the right tasks to the account manager so that we can streamline the process and make things faster. I, for me personally, yeah, yeah, I've had tremendous success with the firm that I've had. We've deployed AOMs in. I mean, it's definitely taken a load off of, you know, the primary director of operations uh, or COO that uh, they could, you know, focus on other things. I mean, more firm related, like project expansion. Yeah. Other projects um, that only they could do. I mean, that's just basically a limitation on the staff side. Um, but the AOM um, is definitely going to be able to help out in terms of, yeah, cascading updates to the team, making sure that everyone is, everyone is heard. Because, right, of course, the in-office um, operations manager is divided. You could consider, I mean, yeah, the virtual staff side is kind of like, your, yeah, your second site, so to speak. So, I mean, having someone there, I mean, just helps out, make sure that this guy is focused on it. And, yeah, I mean, pretty much everyone, oh, everything yeah. becomes easy. Everything follows, you know, after that. I mean, it's been pretty easy from, you know, from the small stuff, I mean, from processing um, leave requests all the way to new hire onboarding and that, that that's a big thing I mean yeah new hire onboarding and training I mean, it takes a few days to a couple weeks depending on the role having the AOM in place I mean it just takes that away from um, whoever is. expanded the operations prior to the addition I think this I mean I think every almost every month we may getting virtual the whole virtual staffing legal seems like it's getting more and more complicated just because of how detailed you have to be. It's like, okay, great. Let's give them a virtual staff. Well, no, that's not enough. We got to fully train them. We got to have an onboarding team. Now we have to give them an assistant operations manager, train them on the softwares, build a couple of training for the firms. Um, 
you know, and this just kind of goes into legal soft of trying to just do everything for the law firms and make sure everything is successful as possible. Uh, what are some areas that you guys are seeing, you know, legal soft take a step forward um, in the virtual staffing um, newly compared to what we're used to do when we have 30 virtual staff versus what we do now? What are some of the changes that you've seen internally within legal soft um, that are really helping law firms be able to adopt the virtual staff? And Phil's giggling, so I'm scared to go to him. <laughs> now, I only have good things to say. Uh, a lot of these things we've implemented over the past uh, few uh, years were all for the benefit of the, you know, of our clients, right? Um, like, for example, when we had like 30 VAs, uh, we had to like create um, training materials uh, from from scratch, right? It, so, we had to we we actually learned uh from our clients in the process because we had to, we 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 were able to observe how they train their VAs. Uh, we were able to uh emulate whatever they were doing, whatever success you know whatever um best practices they have, and incorporate it within you know to to develop our own training programs here in Legal Soft. And uh right now we actually have. A lot. We've grown from the basic intake training uh, for personal injury and lemon law. Now we have training materials for almost all uh, practice areas, <laughs> I guess. And we're even expanding to some other roles like accounting and uh, bookkeeping. Referral managers. Yeah, SEO and stuff, right? So it's it's getting a little bit crazy and i mean for me uh i can go back and review those training materials so i can you know get myself up to speed as well but yeah um aside from that we also have new teams uh within the organization set up uh to support uh specific functions um like for example we have the new onboarding uh team for success managers they're the ones taking on the the new clients uh or handling the new clients so their primary role is not just to you know uh, cater to their every needs it's also to help them set get set up with their their VAs with the tools with the training materials even as far as setting up targets for the VAs which is very very helpful uh, they can actually provide like very um, good insights about how other firms are able to do it, you know, uh, and they can uh, make suggestions as well on how you can improve your process. Did, no, did he sum it up, Matt? He took almost everything. He left out one, though. <laughs> LP360, the uh -huh. platform oh, yeah. that I mean, we've designed to help out. I mean, as type of one-stop shop for virtual staff and so much more. Um, in terms of services, um, yeah, primary um, benefit that most firms that have the virtual staff services, uh, they can see, I mean, is, yeah, is staff management. I mean, they can see the staff real time, see they're logged in, logged out. Um, they can, you know, see what they're doing. Um, they can see, you know, a lot of things. Tenure, because we, we got a lot of firms looking for, I mean, what do you hit a first anniversary? I want to give them a raise, that type of deal. I mean, that, that just makes it a lot more, you know, at their fingertips. Um, so, I mean, that's for staff management. There's tons more in terms of other services uh, that they can take advantage of. I If I start, I mean, yeah, we, we'd be going way over time. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that that's just one thing. I mean, and look, all this sounds amazing. I think we're doing a great job and a lot of firms are onboarding, a lot of virtual team members on their team. And the, the question I get a lot of times is, are virtual staff going to replace local team members? Um, and so and what are your guys' thoughts having seen thousands and thousands of virtual staff on? Will virtual staff replace local case managers, paralegals in the office, intake staff? Will it happen? I'd say not completely or not yet anyway, because technology is still evolving, right? So there are still things that VAs um, cannot do. Like, for example, months ago, uh, VAs are unable to send out physical mails and stuff. But, you know, recently, uh, LP360 just added this new feature where they can do print and mail. So, which is really, really, um, you know, it's, it's a convenient tool. And uh you call this so who knows uh what's you know what other uh, innovations we may have in the in the future um 
yes, the only advice I can uh, give to your clients is that, you know, be open to all these changes and new technologies because uh, it's not only going to make your lives easier, uh, it's also going to uh, make your VA's lives easier as well. So if things are, you know, um, more efficient uh, for your VA, then they can get a lot more done in a day. I have full say no. I could argue yes. I mean, minus the attorneys themselves. I mean, the people that own the firm. I mean, I've personally had experience with virtual law firm, uh, and this is yeah a, a niche practice. I there's a couple practice areas that can support this, but yeah, definitely. I mean, speaking on a more general level, I mean, if they don't need to carry stuff, I mean, if they don't need to go to court. I mean, if that role is any of those, I yeah, a staff member can, you know, a staff member can, virtual staff member um, can take on that role. Matt, tell me, what do you think, for all the firms you're seeing, what's the most efficient way that they can run their firms today, right? So you're a firm with five team members in office, 10 team members in office, and you're growing rapidly, you're out of office space, and you need more staff. What's the most efficient way to do it? Is it to on, is it to replace your local team with a virtual team? Is it to integrate them? How would you scale that? Depending on their goal, <laughs> if they would, they could. They could, you know, kind of go in there, um, keep the best they got in office, and then bring on virtual staff uh, to bolster the ranks um, and continue to expand. Um, yeah, that's perfect. I think it's keeping your A-level staff who know what they're doing, know who care about your firm just as much as they do, and then bringing on three extremely, four extremely passionate virtual team members under them who are just as passionate as John or Mary in their office, mm -hmm. and from there, blowing up amazing teams and amazing pods for what you can have with one local team member, you can have four or so virtual team members. I agree. hundred percent there. I mean, that is a hundred percent possible. I mean, keeping those, keeping those, um, and it, there are, I mean, there's always going to be a need for a couple of people on site. Yeah. It, it's yeah. tons of things to do in the office, but most of it, virtual staff could do it. Um, awesome. Anything else you guys want to throw out there? Advice to new firms starting advice to old firms who say this is, a curse. What is it? I, I want to touch um the prior topic that we were talking about, the ideal first hire. Uh -huh. Um and I, I got you know experiences uh, from from clients that have chosen and they've chosen right. They were looking for someone that could that they feel meshes well with the in office in office dynamic. I mean, if they're, you know, a pretty jolly bunch of people in the office, having someone likewise um that matches their vibe um is definitely there. It is definitely a good option. A lot of a lot of firms would I wouldn't say make a mistake. They're coming from a good place. I mean they look for someone with experience. And on my side, seeing what everything that's happened over the course of three years um, in that kind of process. It's um, I'd argue it's not that effective. I mean, I, I'd say someone, well, yeah, with the dedication, um, yeah, to do, uh, to take on the role is enough. I mean, I've <laughs> a funny story. I've had a had a client that's hired multiple staff members, and they don't care. I mean, Starbucks barista, go ahead, come on here. I and mean, as long as you got, you know, the willingness to learn, you're fine. And these staff members that they've hired that I'm talking about are still there after I'm thinking two years at this point. So nice. it's not really, I unless it's again, a niche position that needs to be filled. I understand. Um, but for most of it, it it's the right person. The team. Yeah. I agree. Uh, to switch tracks a little bit, last topic, um, how was the, our, our trip of finally actually all meeting each other? How was it meeting someone that you see on Zoom after so long? Um, was it like weird, normal, same? How was all of that? Have you ever had like a like a pen pal you just met? 
I I know that's it's pretty dated. It's weird. You know them, but they but you don't at the no. same time. <laughs> yeah, see, Nathan, I know this guy at the same time. I don't know this guy. You know, so I weird hundred percent. Was it fun? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. How was it for you, Nathan? Because you know we're all here in the Philippines. You know we we get to see each other every now and then. So it was our first time seeing you. Um in person uh and yeah i think it's uh fair to hear your side as well because i you know i i'm afraid you might have been um uh, overexposed to our <laughs> to our culture and you might be in shock as the you know uh who, you know things that happened here when you when you visited so no i was not shocked any off ways. I mean, I was just impressed first by uh, the Philippines as a whole of the, I mean, the different cities, the different islands, the, I mean, just central Manila was as beautiful as New York city, but 10 times cleaner. And it has wall and it has malls like, you know, Beverly Hills or West Hollywood, but 10 times nicer and 10 times bigger. Um, no, very little, close to no one there facing homelessness it was very, very nice. The The high rises were insane. Uh, and then meeting all of you guys, I mean, I feel like at this point, we've like, I've known you guys my whole life. Um, but meeting in person was was a whole separate thing. And it was amazing. I recommend it to everyone. I mean, the whole trip costs like $5,000 to meet the entire team. And I and I think it, you know, it goes 100 miles to actually meet someone in person. And so I definitely recommend it to all the clients to definitely meet the virtual staff in person. It's not that far and it's beautiful. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. And it's yeah. always summer here uh, in the Philippines. So <laughs> damn. Yeah, so it works. <laughs> Phil was asking, when is he going to get flown out to the US? No, I never <laughs> asked. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, might as yeah. well. <laughs> you know, when are we going there, Nathan? Hey, I'm in. You show you show me how you come here. I'll pay for it. You come here. <laughs> yeah, soon. that's the, that's phase two. That's phase two. But we we got to work on that for sure. Uh, but guys, thanks so much for jumping on the podcast with me. I really wanted to give the clients and the team and everyone a sense of of what it's like, uh, especially on the on the you know client success side and all the knowledge that you guys have. I wish I could download it and inject it to people. Uh, but you know, it's a pleasure having you guys on the team and pleasure having you guys on the podcast. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. Likewise. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, guys. Bye. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.